and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. I grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy this episode. We'll be going over the War Within, the latest expansion, the three latest expansions that World of Warcraft will have to offer. And uh, for those who are wanting Cataclysm and the Season of Discovery, we'll be going at, over that at a later time. The Cataclysm will be next week, most likely. And uh, Season of Discovery will be the week after, as that is the week that uh, the game or Season of Discovery will be released. So it just makes more sense to do it at that time. But with uh, that being said, we will obviously get into the weekly news. Um, uh, Liskanoth and uh, Zakali Elders are your world bosses for the week. The new world boss does not appear until next reset, so next Tuesday for NA, Wednesday for EU. Warlords of Draenor Time Walking is your bonus event for the week. You can uh, purchase mounts, reputations, pets, etc. from um, Ashran using Time Walking badges, so please do so if you are interested in any specific mount. Deep Six is your brawl for the week. This is a 6v6 battleground, and essentially it's played on very few maps. Temple of Kotmogu, Warsaw Gold, stuff like that. And it is just a very simple 6v6. Um, I do want to throw in there, the Battleground Blitz is uh, kind of a brawl at the moment as well. Essentially it's an 8v8, and the mounts are very fast, they're very fast. 150% movement speed, I believe. And essentially, this is what's going to be the ranked battleground system, the solo shuffle battleground system. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it is going to turn into. And it, it's kind of in its pre-beta, but not really beta stage, essentially. It is very much the a different spin on battlegrounds, where something's a bit faster, your mounts and stuff, but the objectives are a bit different. So, for example, the one that I had, it was... Oh, my God, I've forgotten the name of it. It's the Pandaren one. Twin... No, not the twin one. Um, Not the flag carry one. You know the one where it's got five different bases, like Arathi Basin. I've completely forgotten the name, and it's completely eluding me. Um, But essentially, it's kind of like Arathi Basin. You have five different capture points, and you click the flag to capture the point. But the twist on it was that someone had to actually be at that flag. You had to stay within a certain radius of the flag before you could cap it. And this uh, allows the uh, opposition to not necessarily just have a shit ton of rogues where you can sap and then cap the flag. Or sap and then they trinket the sap and then you blind them, just cap the flag anyway, that kind of deal. You had to be within a certain radius of it. And uh, it's kind of like a percentage thing. So if you had two alliance there and one horde... Uh, it would slowly cap alliance side. If you had two horde there and two alliance, it wouldn't be able to be capped for a while. And if you had more horde there than alliance, it just straight up wouldn't be able to be capped essentially by the alliance because you need to be in favour of it uh, numbers wise, I believe. Anyway, um, I'm not too sure if mythics are happening this week as season three technically hasn't started yet, but. If there are, the uh, affixes would be Afflicted, Bolstering and Tyrannical. Afflicted, you have to help out certain NPCs um, by healing them. Bolstering, um, every time a mob dies, it yells and gives uh, damage and uh, health increase to those uh, NPCs around it, the mobs around it. And Tyrannical, the bosses and the mi- minions that they spawn do have increased health and damage, so bring a... Talent build to accommodate for that. Now, let's get into the war within. So, Blizzard announced at BlizzCon that they are doing a saga, essentially. A three um, expansion saga. Now, the idea about this is that they're going to release them a bit quicker, at a faster pace. Maybe one every year? Maybe? Potentially? Um, Because the way that we have expansions is um, one every two years. You know, you start off in November, then by the time that you get to November this time, um, you're at 10.2, which is halfway through the patch. And then uh, in a year's time, you know, you're into your next expansion. That's how it works. That's how it's always worked. And that's the way that we imagined that it was going to stay. Now, we knew that there was going to be a expansion, 
but we didn't expect three. So all of them will be named very shortly. I do hope that they bring these out at a smaller, like, or at a shorter time span. I understand, like, they want to get stuff perfect, but honestly, non-perfect stuff is very fun to deal with as well. Speaking of non-perfect stuff, I do want to have a little bit of a detour. For those that do PvP, um, something has kind of happened in the game that kind of breaks it in terms of bugs. Um, I don't really know if I want to share this. But essentially, physical slows, such as hamstring, um, concussive shot even, um, rogue poisons, anything along them lines... They persist when trying to remove them. So what do I mean by this? So if you were to apply a hamstring, which is a 50% slow, physical slow, to a target, and you use a Blessing of Freedom from a Paladin, that Blessing of Freedom should remove the hamstring debuff completely. It would just remove the debuff. This is no longer the case. It now just makes... So makes it so that you run at the normal speed, but as soon as that Blessing of Freedom goes off, if you still have that hamstring debuff, it will automatically apply. And because set hamstring is a 12-second debuff and Blessing of Freedom is an 8-second debuff, essentially, if you were to hamstring someone, freedom them, and that freedom ran its course, ran its 8 seconds, and dropped off, you would still have four seconds left on that hamstring and you'd still be slowed for four seconds. It wouldn't remove the hamstring. And uh, you're thinking, okay, just pre-freedom. Even if you have freedom on you beforehand, you can hamstring into the freedom so that you can have a slow on them for after that freedom, which shouldn't happen. Any sort of uh, dis or slow should be dispelled with Blessing of Freedom through shape-shifting as a druid, through anything it's so bad that if a paladin is to bubble a complete immunity yeah you're immune to everything you can hamstring them and slow them using a physical slow in that bubble you can apply hamstring while they are like <laughs> immune that is the same for a mage's ice block you can apply hamstring or a physical slow to someone a mage in an ice block and this is not the case it's massive please like try and get this out there because it is massive for pvp and we want this resolved before the season three start because um it kind of breaks a lot of the classes uh in terms of druids a lot of your strong um utility comes from not being able to be slowed as often or not as easily through the use of shapeshift and you cannot get out of them um, it simply does not remove the debuff if, um, yeah, and, and that's game changing. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd let everyone know about that. It's great fun. It doesn't work with magical um, slows. So we tried the Mages slow. We tried Chains of Ice strangely um, gets removed with like freedom and stuff. It, it does its usual mechanics essentially. But yeah, any physical slows, uh, Piercing how. Uh, hamstring, rogue poisons, concussive shot, um, yeah, anything along them lines. Concussive shot's a bit of a weird one because it's magical, but I think it still classes it as a physical because it was in the past. I don't know, it, it's a bit of a weird one. Um, but yeah, anything along them lines uh, are bugged at the moment and they need to be addressed, so please try and get the word out there with that. Um, but yeah, back to the war within. So, Three expansions. We have uh, World of Warcraft The War Within, World of Warcraft Midnight, and World of Warcraft The Last Titan. Now, The War Within will take place uh, in a cute little zone, essentially, called Kaz Algar. Now, this is a zone that is located below the below Kalimdor, and just off to the west of Pandaria. It has four different zones, Isle of Dawn, Ringing Deeps, Hallowfall, and Azkahet. I, I hope I said the first word there right. Now, Isle of Dawn um, is essentially their capital city. It, it's, it, it's the city of the dwarves that are there, and it's going to be your city for the expansion, essentially. 
you start off on the surface of the world and these four zones go down. So Isle of Dawn is at the top, at the surface. Ringing Deeps is below it. Below that is Hallowfall and then Azjkehet is at the final zone. And the way that it's structured is essentially layers upon layers. So Azjkehet at the bottom, Hallowfall above, Ringing Depths, Isle of Dawn. Um, it, it's very tough to visualize it essentially because we've never had a zone layout like this. Um, uh, the zone layouts you usually have, if you go back to well, Dragonflight, you have four zones, Azure Span, Anaran Plains, Waking Shore, and Thaldrassus. Um, if you go back uh, to another expansion, which is Shadowlands, Ardenwild, uh, Maldraxxus, Revendreth, and uh, Bastion, that's the one. And then before that, you obviously have BFA with uh, multiple different land masses, which is nice. But they ultimately had the same zones. They had Voldoon, um, Zuldazar, and... Ah, oh, what was the other one? The Marsh one. Oh, I've completely forgotten the Marsh one above it. Nazmir, that's it. And then for Alliance, you had Storm, Stormsong Valley, uh, Boralis... No, Boralus was the city. Fuck. Well, you, you get the idea. <laughs> you get the idea. It's it's never been like this, ever. The closest that you can probably... Hmm. I don't even think that there is a zone like this. So, the, the closest... I'm trying to think now. The closest that you could probably get to this is... Probably Northrend, where you go, like, down into... Um, the two dungeons like Unkahet and Ajona Rub. Um, but that's literally about it, and they're just instances. But that is technically underground, um, although it is instanced. Um, so yeah, I, I guess we've never had this, and I think it'll be really cool. Isle of Dawn looks very lush, it looks like a big city, kind of in disrepair a bit. You know, there's loads of foliage, there's greenery growing on everything, but it looks nice. The Ringing Deep is kind of like the mining part of it, where a lot of the work happens. Um, try and think of Black Rock Foundry, but a lot more chill, like a lot more dwarvish sort of architecture, gnomish, that kind of deal. Hello Fall is the one that caught my eye. There is a giant crystal giving light to this place. I love the idea of that, by the way. And it just looks so otherworldy. Like Hallowfall, you've got the Zeppelins flying around. You, it, it kind of reminds me of Revendreth a bit, but just brighter. The architecture looks amazing. And then you've got Azkahet, which is a... I really, really hope that, you know, they make use of the Nerubians and how they built stuff. The Nerubians in lore had just an empire everywhere underneath like everything essentially. So I really hope they do this justice and they make the zone absolutely spectacular um, because they deserve it. Like the Nerubians, to be honest, they definitely deserve at least one zone that is uh, remarkable to their name, uh, in my opinion. But these zones look cool. I'm glad to see, I'm going to be glad to see them, going to be glad to explore them. Um, I think a lot of my time will be spent in Hallowfall, to be honest. Isle of Dawn, obviously, is where the major city is, but Hallowfall just looks amazing compared to all of them, uh, in my honest opinion. That's that's just my opinion. All of these zones will have the dynamic flying, so you can uh, uh, go to the TBC flying uh, if you want, or you can stick with the dragon riding flying. And personally, I'm going to be sticking to dragon riding flying. I find it so much more interactable and a lot more enjoyable, to be honest, rather than just hitting numlock and going in a straight line. Plus, uh, um, older models of mounts are able to be ridden as if they were dragon riding. So I know that Flight Form's actually getting a update, which is really cool for that. You have stuff like Invincible, you have um, the Nether Drakes from TBC that are getting the update and all of that. That should be around once the expansion comes out, if not earlier, probably. Now, there's uh, probably around a few things that we're going to look at. Delves. Delves was one of the things that the they kind of pinpointed a lot towards. Now, Delves are a one to five like player thing. 
they essentially you go in with iconic NPCs. I think the first season was like Bran Bronzebeard that you're going in with. And uh, you can do like uh, certain things. There's puzzles, there's mobs to kills kind of thing. Um, and you earn cosmetics, mounts, etc, etc. This is one to five players. And it's, uh, what was the word for it? Class agnostic. I think that was it. So essentially, if you're a healer, it will scale to a healer. Tank scale to a tank. DPS scale to a DPS. And it will do that for the one to five party that you're in. So this is a more casual um, end game content, evergreen uh, feature that they call it. And essentially, this is something that they're going to basically improve upon each and every expansion. The delves uh, are, like I said, a very casual thing. You have, obviously, your PvE, which is your Mythic and your Raiding. You have your PvP, which is Battlegrounds and Arenas. But the casual player base get the old stuff, and the old stuff is already done. So you're kind of lagging behind in terms of expansions. So, yes, you can go and farm stuff from Battle for Azeroth, like raid-wise, but you can't farm anything from Shadowlands yet, like raid-wise, so you can't get any of the transmogs. You're waiting for the War Within to be able to go and farm them raids, which shouldn't be the case at all. Um, But yeah, that's kind of all the casual players have at the moment, is that farming, that mount farming, that transmog farming, you know, all of that, the achievements, stuff like that. And this will be a good way for them to keep up their gear relatively, like, well, um, and don't have to do any sort of PvE or PvP content. They just go about their business in the open world and have fun. These are also something that PvPers can do while they wait for uh, Q-Pops, as well as, I was going to say PvEers, but I suppose you're in a group for uh, a dungeon and if you're in a group, then you can't necessarily enter this because it will scale to the group site. Yeah, unlucky PvEers, but you've got a lot already. Um, PvPers can definitely do these and just get a little bit of a quick uh, gold boost if they need to. Warbands are the next big thing. Um, Warbands, essentially, they make everything on your account... Um, or they make everything account wide. So they're going to eventually look at doing reputations, collections, achievements, renown, um, bank access, absolutely everything. And they're going to share it between your characters. Um, the reputation is a massive one because they did say farming it on a different character, like the reputation can be a bit tedious and annoying. So that is what they're hoping to eliminate, which is very good. Now, the wall bands, what I'm hoping for, they did show a little bit of a screen or a preview. Essentially, they've got the characters, your characters, uh, all sat around in a camp, around a campfire. And I really hope that they do this. And this is like the main login screen now. You kind of pick your character via clicking on the camp. I think that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, they'll show like your little characters all in their transmog, sat around a campfire, you know, chilling and stuff. And it would just be a really nice sort of different view on the main menu because we've we've never had something different, never on the main sort of login screen um, for 20 years nearly. Yeah, nearly 20 years because you've obviously, you log in and you go to your character select. You've got your character and then your characters on the right that you have, your alts. That has never changed in 20 years. That's always been obviously visual updates and stuff and the backgrounds of like the characters like the torrent and stuff has obviously been updated but that itself the core fundamentals of it has never changed i could be completely wrong but i'm pretty sure i'm not in this instance um so i think it will be really fun to just that it's the small things that obviously are going to change that and uh, or change the way that you feel about the game because it will feel fresh essentially Hero talents. These are the ones. These are the bad boys that I cannot, cannot wait to like see. Essentially, so hero talents are going to be a talent specialization that you are given um, for your class. Now, each talent tree or each specialization, each class has three different specializations. Demon hunters and druids are a special case, as they referred to it. Now, these uh, specialisations will share a specialisation. I say that way too many times. I don't like it. And uh, 
it has many different forms. So I'm going to only pick out a few because I'm not going to go over all of them. Uh, Death Knight has... I'll, I'll go over one from each class that sound the coolest. Rider of the Apocalypse for Death Knight. Felsgard for the Demon Hunter. I, I like a Loon's Chosen. It's got to be a Loon's Chosen for uh, Druid. Evoker, Chrono Warden. Hunter, Dark Ranger. Loads of people will be liking that one, just saying. Mage, Spellslinger. Monk, uh, Conduit of the Celestials. Paladin, Herald of the Light. Priest, all of these sound really cool, but Void Weaver will go for. Rogue, Death Stalker. Shaman, to- uh, I like Stormbringer actually. Stormbringer or Farce. Warlock, Diabolist. Oh, that sounds so good. And Warrior, I'm going to go with Colossus. Now, all of these essentially are subspecs. So they share. So if you're a Fury Warrior and you want to share the subspec with protection, that will be the Colossus like subspec. So this will mean that you're going into more of the tankier nature of it. Um, the ones that they showed are the Druid ones, and they're the ones that I have seen the most. So I'm going to be going over them as an example. So you have Keeper of the Grove and Elune's Chosen. Now this is for balanced druids. Um, Elune's Chosen kind of goes into more of your damage, like your burst damage. Keeper of the Grove is more sustained damage, more, you know, sort of buffing up for bigger hits, essentially, and more consistent damage. Um, and you have about five rows of things. So you have one one talent at the top, like you usually do in every single specialization. And this will give you your baseline for the talent, the hero talents. That will be, this is purely example, 5% damage increase on your star fire. Okay. Now, there are obviously nine different choices. There's three different nodes to go down. And at the bottom, you have something that amplifies the top um, node, essentially. So it will just be another 5% damage on your Starfire. Yeah, that kind of deal. You, you kind of get the idea. It, it really wants to hone in on what you're amplifying, um, essentially, from that top node. The others are obviously going to change how you play your specializations every now and again. Um, these can be switched out completely at will. And obviously, you just need to not be in combat, so which is really good. You don't need to go to a trainer or anything. Um I'm pretty sure you can switch between the others as well. So if you are a loon's chosen and you wanted to go to Keeper of the Grove, I'm pretty sure you can do that. You just don't need to be in combat or you just don't, you just shouldn't be in combat in order to do so. Now, these are really, really good. We have only seen the Boomkin ones um, so far, but all of them will be released, I would imagine, very soon within the next few months, I would say. Um, they are all subject to change, obviously, but it will be nice for us to actually get our hands on them and test them out and stuff like that. We obviously have a new race. Who would have thought? Another dwarf race, Earthen. So I'm pretty sure that is three or four dwarf races that we can play. Uh, you have normal dwarves. You have the black rock dwarves. And then Earthen, so three dwarves. I'm very curious about their racial. Um, the dwarf racials are usually very good for like PvP. Um, but yeah, essentially you will unlock these guys by completing the main campaign and they will just join you. There's no rep required. It is just simply do the campaign and you will be able to make one of these earthen dwarves, which is really, really cool. Uh, they did show some cosmetics and there was a female dwarf with a magnificent beard and it looked amazing. So definitely want to make one of them <laughs> dynamic flying we've gone over a little bit but this is essentially um you can go between both of the flying uh types the dragon riding flying or the normal tbc flying um the zone layouts are built with dragon riding in mind um so be wary of that like the the passages go through it allows you to swoop down get momentum and you can go back up and use momentum and stuff like that i would imagine that they've taken all of this into account and you know make it very useful um or very user friendly i should say 
The best thing about it is uh, everything that we've learned in the Dragon Isles, essentially, via the um, glyphs, our dragons or our mounts will just naturally learn them. We don't have to scout out for these glyphs or anything. We will just naturally learn them and we'll be very elegant as we're flying through the skies, um, essentially. And as always, there's new dungeons and raids. The... There are eight new dungeons and one raid um, at the very start of the expansion. Four of these dungeons will be leveling dungeons. Four of them will be max level dungeons. And then obviously the raid is max level. Um, the first raid is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it is Ajkahet. It is the uh, Nerubian stronghold essentially. And you're going in there to kill the queen um, who has made a bargain with Zalatath. Um, and yeah, that, that's basically what you're doing. <laughs> that, that, that's it. We don't need anything more. We're just going in there and killing the queen of the Nerubians. So the War Within looks good. It, it really does look good. We need to know a date for an alpha and a beta. I would hope that they can get that out relatively soon. Because um, usually they're quite quick with PTRs, um, this expansion. But there is no 10.2.5 PTR immediately. So it kind of says that they're working on this as quick or as much as possible. So Dragonflight, the back end of Dragonflight might be a bit neglected, but I don't like that. I really don't want to see that. There has been info on a season four for Dragonflight already, um, which is really good. You've got PvP mounts, glad mounts coming up. So essentially, essentially they're... They've got a lot of stuff ready, I think, for 10.3 and 10.2.5. It is just going to be finalising that sort of thing. The Midnight and the Last Titan expansions, we can only speculate, I'm afraid. Um, I would like to see the War Within release mid to late 2024, which I think it will. I think it will release around... I think we'll get a little bit of an earlier release. I think we'll get August... I think we'll get August compared to the usual like November, December, but that's being very optimistic um, because you have Cataclysm in the first quarter of the year is what they've uh, said. And then you obviously have um, 10.2.5 and 10.3 to come. And then you've got 10.3.5, which is the pre-patch for the um, expansion. And yeah, I, I think it's very optimistic to say like August time, but who knows? And then hopefully after that, every sort of year or so, we'll see a new expansion. Year, year and a half. Um, I don't know what that will mean for patches. They might just do two patches, two major patches. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll definitely see. But that is it for this episode. Thank you all very much for listening, as always. Do check out all of the socials down below. Constant stuff happening. But thank you all very much for listening. And go, Valor friend. Goodbye, all.